What's going on there guys? Good evening. Good Tuesday evening. It is uh, April 12, 2022. The date about 6.33 p.m. California time. Uh, it is the Earthmaster here with an earthquake uh, coming into the seismographs there. You can see it showing up on the Japan station. Looks like a 5.3 earthquake uh, coming into the area of Japan, but I think that's a little bit larger. At least to me, it looks a little bit larger on the seismograph than what the uh, Earthquake 3D program is showing. Now, now they just jumped up to a, a 5.4, but <laughs> I think it's still a little bit larger than that. Uh, just basing my observation off of this seismograph station uh, right down here where the hand is, bottom hand screen. That's a uh, station along the east coast of Japan measuring that uh, magnitude earthquake there. 5.4 looks like for now. We'll see what the USGS reports as they, um, as they uh, get that earthquake information in. Looking at the map here from the EMSC model, shows that movement up here just off the coast of uh, uh, Japan there. 5.4, at least here on this map. We'll see, uh, like I said, if this thing gets upgraded, I'm pretty certain that it will. USGS is not showing nothing yet on the map as far as any type of magnitude goes, but hey, it is what it is. We'll go with the flow. We'll continue the update uh, until they get the um until they get uh, everything going there west coast what's going on out here first gonna go start out here on the quiet zone uh, and that includes a good portion of california and the oregon area washington seeing some movement up and down the cascades here uh, up around seattle and victoria area uh, all seeing some microquakes around the looks like some, some at mount st helens too and a couple around mount rainier uh, most of this all microquake activity into Northern California, things pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on here. One little earthquake outside of Truckee, it looks like. A point three up there in the Sierra Nevada. But uh, anything, uh, most of the activity is pretty, uh, pretty far south of the Sacramento area. A little bit of movement around the Bay Area along the Hayward Fault Zone, the uh, Calaveras Fault Zone, and down here along the Hayward Fault Zone. Seen some uh, microquake activity around the Bay and uh, it's moving outside of the uh, Fresno area around the San Joaquin Valley. A couple earthquakes out there. Uh, pretty deep. These are very deep earthquakes here for the, uh, the valley areas. 19 kilometers deep uh, for some of that movement. Uh, see if this has been reviewed, which it has. So kind of, uh, kind of curious as to what's going on there with that pretty deep earthquake uh, in the San Joaquin Valley there. Could it be related to the drought? Who knows? That's pretty deep though. Uh, further down south, Ridgecrest area, pretty spotty in movement. Not a whole lot going on. A little bit of activity throughout the Garlock Fault Zone. Even then, things pretty skimpy. Look at Southern California. Look at this activity here. I can almost count uh, here with two hands the amount of earthquakes. And, and we can minus these around Corona. Those are query blasts. So probably about seven earthquakes so far in a 24-hour period of the all magnitudes. That's almost unheard of in the Southern California region. So I'm not for sure what's brewing down here, but uh, I don't know if quiet is good. Uh, backing out here into the rest of the state, some activity up around Idaho and into Montana and Wyoming. Uh, Yellowstone has uh, kind of calmed down here from their little earthquake swarm that they had a uh, couple days ago. I'm not seeing any renewed movement at the Yellowstone area. I know we got some weather going on up there. Uh, some wind, a lot of cold air funneling down getting ready to funnel down anyway uh, into the center part of the country. Uh, other than that, I don't see any swarms, no major earthquakes to report there at uh, the Yellowstone National Park. Some movement over here uh, outside of the New Mad, well, actually inside the New Madrid zone. We've seen these earthquakes pop up here this morning. Uh, about four of them in a back-to-back -back sequence here at the northern end of the New Madrid zone. They got this, uh, USGS has this near Marston, Missouri at uh, about nine kilometers below surface. Some deeper activity on the New Madrid zone. We haven't seen anything uh, following this activity this morning. So, uh, but still something to watch pretty closely there along that major seismic hazard zone in the, uh, the New Madrid zone. Uh, one earthquake here south of Knoxville, a 1.8. And it's a movement over here around Rich Richmond. Looks like a 2.4 popped up near Ashland, Virginia, 9.3 kilometers below the surface. Puerto Rico, some movement around the southwest edge like typical. 
Puerto Rico Trench looks pretty quiet for the most part. Uh, and a little bit of activity here around the Costa Rica area, San Jose 4.0 at 11 kilometers south America. Some activity up and down the Peru Chile Trench, but nothing major going on. Just a couple deep earthquakes into the subduction zone and uh, some activity earlier this morning around the South Sandwich Trench. These areas have not seen any subsequent movement uh, throughout the afternoon or, or this early evening. Uh, there is the 5.7. See, I knew it looked a little bit larger. I, I've been reading these seismographs for many, many years. I, I know when a, uh, I definitely know when the earthquake looks much larger than what they're stating. Uh, that one seismograph station I showed you there in Japan is way up here. So it, it's, it's considerable distance, right? I don't see how a uh, little bitty earthquake would, or a four pointer would, uh, uh, what the EMSC show. Wasn't it like a, uh, oh, I can't remember. Either way, the USGS definitely shown at 5.7, a much larger earthquake uh, right around the East China Sea just coming in. And we've seen that pop up on the live seismographs there. So a little bit of activity stretching over here. This one's pretty shallow. Some very shallow surface uh, quakes here. Uh, prior to that, earlier, much earlier this morning, we've seen a, a few fours down here in Taiwan and a little one here south of Tokyo. But it uh, looks like we're starting to crack up here, getting some further westward pressure movement. Uh, with things very quiet here along the eastern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire. Um, and, and, and now we've seen some forward movement here. Uh, it's, it should see things, should see things uh, continue westward with that pressure movement. But uh, this one's relatively shallow. It's normally when we see the deeper activity uh, along the trenches, the Japan Trench, for example, Mariana Trench and areas around the Java uh, Trench here. Uh, we start to see that surface activity really ramp up. But this one's just a surface quake uh, in itself. So I'm uh, going to watch this pretty closely, see which one wants to give here, the West Coast or the uh, um, East Coast of Japan. We'll see what happens. Uh, Fiji, Tonga region, a couple earthquakes, some deep, around 552 kilometers. That activity from earlier this morning. So no subsequent, uh, I don't think we've seen any subsequent larger activity here in this region, all that from this morning. So... It's been very quiet here, folks. Uh, quiet along this western portion and fairly quiet along the eastern portion as well. So that doesn't last for long. And uh, we know that. Things do kick up. Um, up here into the Aleutian Islands, I had a 4.6. Most of this activity, too, was from earlier this morning. I had one earthquake a few hours ago, a 2.5 way over here. But uh, other than that, all that activity is old too. So it's kind of at a standstill, kind of a breaking ground, seeing what's going to pop first. Uh, Hawaii, some movement uh, going on out here, including one lone earthquake way up north of the Big Island, a 2.3 at 12 kilometers. And some further activity here around the southeast region of the Big Island with the uh, swarm looking pretty typical there in the southeast area. Uh, looking at the trimmer map for tonight, we're not seeing any return of trimmer. Now, I don't know if that's due to them not reporting it or if there is indeed no trimmer. I have no way to monitor any live activity coming in uh, from the trimmer department because, well, it, it's, it's not really like earthquakes where they give off a sudden jolt and you can see it on the seismograph. These are much slower uh, events, slow slip events that kind of give off a vibration and that's a trimmer, of course, along the Cascadia. And uh, I, I don't know any place where I can monitor that type of activity. At least I don't have access to it. So uh, just got to take their word for it that uh, things are kind of calm for now along the Cascadia. I will be checking out the Mount St. Helens seismograph station here and see what these are reporting on their recorded data. Now, that's pretty easy for anyone to access. And uh, sometimes they got it all whacked out, but... Uh, Let's go ahead and go back to the previous UTC time. A little bit of earthquake activity. We've been watching this over the past few days. Seems like about every 10, 12 hours or so, we see a little a microquake, which is typical, right, for uh, for uh, plate tectonics around volcanoes. There's fault systems all over up there. Uh, this activity looks like it's right smack dab, though, at the dome in Mount St. Helens. But uh, I don't believe these guys are reporting uh, any of this activity still actually it looks like they are there see that look at that all be darned a couple earthquakes showing up here a point one and uh point one all right so a little bit of activity being reported today it looks like 
uh, within the last hour. Last two days, some movement as well, but uh, no major swarming to report there at uh, Mount St. Helens, folks. Uh, we'll check out the Three Sisters, see if we can... Uh, these guys, need they need to... They definitely need to add more seismograph stations here throughout the area, especially with that bulge they've been uh, talking about here along the southwest edge. Kind of giving some vertical uplift. Let's see what this station's all about. Uh, the husband. Are they reporting any data today? Let's see... Maybe so. Do, 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 do. Oh, wow. Looks kind of similar to the uh, Mount St. Helens data. Let's see what they got here. Let's see if the husband is going to tell us any telltale signs of any seismic activity at the volcano. Holy smokes! That's just like way overblown. This kind of reminds me of the. Uh, Oh, the old TV screens, right? The static, where if you stare into it long enough, you'll start seeing these uh, little faces and weird things in there. Anyway, can't really tell if there's any seismic uh, activity in there. It's, it looks like uh, it looks like garbage, to be honest. I don't know if there's some major wind events going on up there right now, but it uh, looks like it's overblown. Uh, when it is acting normal, it looks like there might be a little activity here, um, but no major seismic activity to report there at the uh the husband around the three sisters area for now earthquakes canada we'll go ahead and check this out uh real quick here a little bit of activity once again up here around the uh looks like the alaska area the last quake was a 2.6 and that was from early 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 earlier this morning no subsequent movement to report here along this area of the north american plate folks what do we got for solar weather activity? Things uh, kind of kicking up possibly tonight, right? After, uh, well, no, actually tomorrow night it looks like. Uh, tomorrow night we should see a G2 class storm uh, possibly make its way into our planetary system here. And give us a, a, shore, a show, at least at the higher latitudes. I would love to see something pop down here in Southern Cal or uh, Northern California, but uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. You never know. With solar maximum coming up here, we could be looking at that. Just got to be at the right place at the right time. So G2 class storm possible here on the 14th, uh, up around the KP index of 6. That should uh, kick up the higher latitudes there at about 80% chance of some storming. Uh, calming down a little bit on the 15th, but still pretty elevated there for higher latitudes with the G1 class storm. Sea flare activity is only at 10%. That's very, very low. Uh, earlier in the day today, we did see some minor sea flares pop up here. And I'm not 100% certain exactly where these uh, sunspots are popping off from. Which sunspot it, or what these flares are popping off from. These flares are popping off from which sunspots. There we go. Got to be something from, uh, got to be somewhere around these newer ones that are popping up here. But there's some really low grade seas just barely reaching into the sea level. Uh, but it's kind of active, so it is starting to kick back up a little bit. We'll watch these couple sunspots as they come around the bend and uh, see if they get dynamic enough to show us what they're made of. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have yourself a good evening. Please stay safe out there. And remember, quiet is not necessarily good, folks, um, when it comes to earthquake activity. We'll see what the uh, plate systems want to do after the 5.7. This is, again, this is a very shallow earthquake. Uh, so I'm thinking here, this whole area right here around Japan south along the Mariana Trench northward is an area to watch pretty closely as well. But then again, California, right? Very quiet, uh, and quiet is not good. Have a good night, folks. We'll chat you guys a little bit later tomorrow. Peace out.